Hi everybody, my name is Jason. And my name is Mike. And today we're gonna to talk to you about how to select the right nozzle for your performance spray gun. Painting today is incredibly complex. There's a lot of variability in coatings, and because of that, we've made a wide range of nozzles for you to select from for your performance spray gun. The spray gun can be set up a lot of different ways. Today we're going to show you with normal standard HVLP and fine finish nozzles. But keep in mind, we also make pressure fed nozzles for those of you using any bulk fed systems, pressure pots, things like that. But for now, let's focus on our fine finish and our HVLP nozzles. So we make our nozzles in two different styles, fine finish and HVLP. The way to tell the difference other than the writing on the cap itself is by looking at the color. The charcoal kind of smoked colored air cap is a fine finish nozzle. The clear air caps are for HVLP. So when looking at HVLP and fine finish nozzles, when would a painter use one of these over the other one? Um, some of it is painter preference, but if you are using more of a high solids product, the fine finish nozzle is gonna atomize it better and you'll get a smoother paint job on your clear. So things um, like clear undercoats yes. too, probably, depending on yes. the undercoat? Yes, potentially. Okay. Or some of the uh, waterborne base coats. Are the HVLP style nozzles, when would a painter decide to use this um, for fine finish? Solvent base coats, it seems to work really well on solvent base coats. And if you want to get the best transfer efficiency, that's what you're going to want to use. That's a great point. So a lot of people don't realize the amount of paint that actually hits the panel when you're spraying varies between the type of nozzle that you're using. Fine finish nozzles typically are a higher pressure around yes. that two bar mark. Depends a little bit on the spray gun. With our fine finish nozzles and our performance spray gun, we recommend around two bar or 29 PSI. We're gonna be atomizing finer. So like you said, for clear coat, mm -hmm. maybe some of those textury type thicker coatings that we wanna lay down a little bit finer. Yes. We have a lot more control over our texture with this nozzle. Mm -hmm. But to your point, if we're trying to have higher transfer efficiency, get more paint on the panel, we're using thinner base coats like a coat dry type water mm -hmm. or a solvent base. Yes. This is gonna be the most efficient type nozzle you can use, For but sure. you do give up a little bit of control over that texture. Again, with base coat, it's gonna dry very flat. So these are typically a good choice if you're using one of those type systems. Yes, a lot of it is, like you said, a lot of it's uh, user preference, painter preference. Um, if you're a little slower when you apply your paint, maybe the HVLPs are the way to go. So when we're looking at the two nozzles, now we understand the fine finish versus the HVLP. There's also a huge range of sizes. Yes. So if I'm a painter today, how do I know which size nozzle to use for the coating that I'm applying? Well, that's really easy because every paint company will have this, the TDS and the TDS will tell you what size nozzle you should use. Do those ever get changed? They get changed semi-regularly. So even if you are used to spraying the product and you know which one to use, wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and look at it from time to time, a couple times a year. Yeah, and that's a great point. Um, a lot of you experience this, those of you who are painters. Paint companies have had to reformulate a lot of products with new regulations and some of the material shortages that I'm sure you've heard of. So in the last couple of years, some of those tech sheets have changed a little bit more regularly. Yes. So it's a good idea to periodically check those tech sheets. It'll tell you what pressure to spray at. Sometimes it'll tell you between fine finish and HVLP which yes. nozzle to use. Yes, it will. It'll tell you the size and how to set up your spray gun. Yes. And you're not going to get a notice when they do change the TDS. So it's on, it's on you to look and, and make sure and do the research. Mm -hmm. so. so again, we have a wide range. What's new is additional sizes in our fine finish line. We used to just have the 1.2, the 1.3, and the 1.4. Those were the most common nozzle sizes used for yes. most coatings. Um, we've listened to you. We've heard that we want more nozzle sizes in that fine finish configuration. So we have a whole range now from 0.9, 1.1, all the way up to 2.0 like you're used to in HVLP. So with this wide range of nozzles, let's talk about where we may use some specific ones. So let's start on the smaller side, like our 0.9 or 1.1 nozzle. Where would we use a nozzle like that? Um, those are perfect for doing small spot repairs and in certain brands, UV primers. That's that's where you'll want to use those. And that's a common mistake we see painters make. They think UV primer, high solids, a lot of times they grab a large tip size. Make sure you check your tech sheets. Sometimes they're calling out a 0.9 to actually spray that primer. Yes. 
So what about a 1-2 up to say a 1-4? Where would I uh, use those? Those are pretty much the workhorse sizes. You're going to use those for your sealer, your base coat, whether it's solvent or waterborne, and your clear coat for the most part. Again, depending on the clear and the base coat you're using, check the tech data sheets, they'll tell you which size to use, at least which size to start with, and the pressures. And again, we have nozzles larger than that. So uh, one six, do you have mm -hmm. examples of where we would use a one six nozzle? Ah, that's, that's been my go-to primer nozzle. The one six works great for primer. Puts it on, doesn't put it on too heavy, but puts it on smooth. And we do have some larger sizes than that. So a 1.8 and also a 2.0 is our current largest nozzle size in the new configuration. Where might we use those? Oh, rocker guard, works great for rocker guard. A lot of that. Certain primers, some spray poly, could use it as well. Mm -hmm set up right and typically um, with and those undercoat. yeah undercoat Undercoats is a big one too yes. yeah and typically with those larger tip sizes those thicker coatings typically you're going to want to use a pressurized cup system ours is called our ho cup system it is compatible with any of the spray guns so if you already have a performance spray gun it works fine with that but even the new performance spray gun too it is also backwards compatible with that system so you still can use that HO system with these larger nozzle sizes if you have those heavy texture coatings yes. like you mentioned that you need to spray. So in summary, we have a wide range of nozzles. The most important thing is probably always check your tech sheet, right? Yeah, number one thing. Number one. Yep. Again, they change. They're gonna tell you what size nozzle you should be using. It may tell you whether you should use fine finish or HVLP. Remember, those are two different pressure rated nozzles, essentially. Your fine finish, higher pressure, atomizes finer. Your HVLP, a little bit higher transfer efficiency, but doesn't quite atomize as fine. So your solvent bases, your coat dry waters, things like that, excellent nozzle for those. Even some of your undercoatings, primer, stuff like for that. For sure, yeah. One thing to keep in mind with our nozzles is they are reusable. So if you clean these nozzles properly, you can get well over 100 refinish hours out of every individual nozzle. It's easy to know when it's time to change. Either you left possibly a 2K coating and now it's catalyzed inside, making it very hard to clean, or your pattern starts to degrade because you've used it so many times. If either of those things happen, put on a new nozzle, you have like new spray gun performance. We hope this content was useful to you. Thanks for checking it out, and we hope to see you in the next video. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss our next video. If you have questions or have ideas for future topics, leave us a comment down below. If you want more content like this, be sure to check us out at the 3M Collision Repair Academy. The link for that is in the description below. Thank you for watching, see you next time.